from uh, Philip Smith from Glenshee Kitchen, where a husband and wife team based up in Glenshee in Persia. Um, and we have a range of traditional preserves, marmalades, jams, chutneys, sweets, and home bakes. My wife, Sue, makes most of the things I help out occasionally. It's all done within our farmhouse, within our kitchen, uh, very much on a small scale, uh, so using the best local ingredients that we can find. And we've got quite a strong following in Edinburgh, um, and what the Cayley Culture Street Fair does is give us a kind of shop window on Princess Street, obviously the most important shopping street in, in Scotland. Um, and it means that not only do we have people that have bought from us before popping in to buy our products, but also we get to um, promote our products to the many hundreds and hundreds of tourists that are in uh, Edinburgh for the Easter weekend. My name is Tony, Tony Mitchell. Um, I'm the inventor and developer of the new Scottish board game, Stramash, um, and it's something that we launched at the end of October in uh, 2011, so it's a fairly new game, although we've been playing it as a family and uh, with friends for so on for quite a while, but we're now selling it you know, to uh, anybody and everybody who wants it. Yeah. The game is um, it's kind of like a, it's an adaptation, an interpretation of um, a number of classic chase games around the board. Games like Ludo and Sorry and, uh, and all the rest of them. But what we've done is we've changed it so that the board is different, but also the mechanism is different. So instead of using car uh, dice to play, we use cards. And that takes away just the pure luck, but also makes it into more of a thinking person's game. Because the cards, the way that we use them, allow you a certain amount of choice when it comes to playing your round, rather than having to rely on the luck of the dice that tells you what you have to do. It's been designed and conceived in Scotland, and it's called Stramash because it's all about knocking each other off the board and all that sort of thing, and elbowing and fighting and pushing and shoving. So it has that sort of kind of Scottishness to it. We do have um, sort of like a notion that it is conceivable, possibly, that Stramash has actually been around for many years and has been kept as a secret in Scotland. And in the rule book, at the back of the rule book, there's some stories about how Stramash might have had crucial effect on Scottish history in the years gone by. But that might be totally untrue. I just don't know. I've been a wood for a for 16 years now. I taught myself. That was really difficult to start business as a professional wood turner. We don't know what you do. It took a long, long time to learn. A couple of years, we got really good. Cut up the wood with a chainsaw, uh, rough turn it so it's quite thick, like that. Uh, dry it out, it warms, we turn it to a true bowl. And uh, a few coats of polish and uh, sell it for a fair price, for a fair trade. Uh, I'm Richard, I'm from Ladywell Designs and we do really well in terms of handmaking items out of the famous Harris Tweed. We make them all in our studio in Perthshire and have great fun kind of designing new things and making tweed accessible for everyday use. Taking it from the formal to allow people to combine it with new technology and make it a really fashionable accessory. We are not large scale at all, the business is all built around um, myself and my mum Ellie and we kind of, we've taken it from a concept using a little bit of tweed and putting our own interpretation on modern designs. Uh, we design and make everything by hand in Scotland. Well the Harris Tweed is arguably Scotland's most famous fabric, more so than Tartan as a recognisable brand and it's, it's known both for its heritage uh, and, and the status it's always been afforded. It's Again, it's made by hand in the Outer Hebrides um, on old style looms by only allowed to be made by people who live on the islands themselves and only allowed to be made, interestingly, in people's homes. But it's it's always had a real reputation for quality and the kind of the folklore that surrounds it, it makes it a really rich, vibrant and recognisable fabric. 
We're not based on Harris. We're lucky enough to have a really good relation, really good personal relationship with a lot of the weavers that work out of the islands and the mills and the, the Harris Tweed Authority, which now owns itself and regulates the use of the fabric and the brand itself. We were one of the first um, small scale producers to be issued with the, uh, the use of the Harris Tweed Authority badge which certifies the fact that they like our productions, they like the, the ethos and the ethics to which we produce, you know, remaining handmade in Scotland, and they like our products. Well, Cayley Culture has been a real eye-opener for us, actually. We, we love Edinburgh, and uh, Edinburgh loves us, it loves our product, but more than anything, it's been a fantastic ethos, a really good vibe. Um, people are here talking really proudly about the ethics that they stick to when making their products, and I think the reception's been really clear, both for the punters and the people who've come along just to see what small producers are about and, and to experience a little draft of, of individual Scottish culture. Bye.